Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Small Business Cheerleader podcast. Today, I'm joined by the wonderful, the tech savvy and the entrepreneurial uh, Jilly Corker. Corker, I said Corker. How are you today? I'm really well. Thank you so much for having me, Nicola. That's all right. That's all right. I've been wanting to get you onto the podcast for ages because I myself <clears throat> want to know everything there is to know about websites and SEO and how those two work together in getting your business seen online. So um, you're the person to see, 20 years sales and marketing experience, been mm -hmm. working with all the biggest eyewear brands in the world on their marketing and sales. And you believe that tech is not just for the boys. Um, let me know. Fill us in on um, how you got to where you are today and um, what you're going to teach us in regards to website and SEO in today's podcast. Oh, awesome. Well, um, where, how did I get here? Oh, long journey. I'm that old. No, um, look, I started off as a journalist, actually. Um, and I left journalism when I realized my articles were really just there to stop the ads clashing together. I was quite disillusioned by it. Um, and I thought, well, if I'm making money for someone, I probably should make a little bit more money for my business. Big journeys don't make that much. Um, yeah, and I, I actually moved to Scotland uh, about 16 years ago, which is where I grew up. And um, I, I, I fell into working in the optical industry. And I, yeah, you're right. I, I got to work with some amazing brands like Chanel, Versace, um, Bulgari. Um, it was a real eye opener to a completely different world of communicating brand value. So I worked, I worked with uh, those companies and I worked for other optical industry, uh, optical companies in the UK for quite some time. And just before I left the UK about seven years ago, uh, I was working as an operations manager for the largest uh, luxury eyewear retailer in the UK, which is Pret Bois. And if you want some sunnies, go and check them out. I still, I still get a good deal. Um, <laughs> but um, it was very, I mean, it was a totally different world when we started off, right? A completely different world. Completely. Um, and... You know, all you had to do to get your website ranking was basically say the words that you were trying to sell um, by matching domain names. So Ray-Ban sunglasses, Ray-Ban sunglasses, Ray-Ban sunnies, Ray-Ban polarized them. You buy all of those and point them towards your, your main website and you'd rank that. I mean, it was that easy, right? Mm. Um, but times have really, really changed. Um, and in the last, and when I came back to Australia, I had my son, you can see his cute little face in the background. Um, and in the last three or four years that I've been helping uh, business women, small business women with their sales and marketing, SEO has become a completely different game. And it's really now more aligned with how your website functions for the user. So in May, uh, Google's going to be rolling out a big change, like one of the biggest changes to their algorithm in quite a while. And they don't often tell us in advance that they're going to be changing the algorithm. Um, but they've really told the, the, the community that they're going to be focusing more and more on how the page delivers um, results for the end user. Like, yeah. is it a good user experience, effectively? And that's where I come in with, um, with my coaching philosophy is websites and SEO don't stand alone. So a lot of people go to a web, develop, a web designer, often a graphic designer, um, and get a, a beautiful website made for them. Mm. But they don't function on the SEO. No. And so if they're not concentrating on SEO, it's like building a beautiful store in the middle of the nowhere with no road to it. No way to find your beautiful store. Yeah. And the reverse can happen as well. Um, and this is what Google's really trying to avoid with this new update is that people can build all of these amazing ways to get you to a store and get you in. And then you get to the store and you're like, this isn't for me. This isn't ex it's like switch bait almost. This isn't what I was expecting from this experience. Um, so user intent is, is huge. Like what does what is it that the user is actually looking for? Yeah, that, that, that's exactly right. And what I've found people are doing and have been doing is making the website all about them. Mm, I call that eye disease, but maybe that's just my optical background. No, it is 100%. And what I've been focusing on when it comes to even my own website and other websites, you know, how am I solving a problem? Absolutely. And, and, and how am, you know, it's not come and see me, I'm the greatest. And, 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 and I did a... Um, 
a, a, an IGTV about it the other day. It's like, stop saying how great you are. Mm -hmm. Like if everyone did that, I mean, the world is a boring place. Talk about how you're there to solve and serve people. And yeah. you're going to have that, that cut through on your website because it's more authentic and people understand, as you say, straight up. Because mm -hmm. um, today we're going to talk about the three steps um, in regards to making sure you're doing that. And the three questions your website um, has five seconds to answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what are we looking at when it comes to those questions? What are the, the three questions everyone's website has to answer um, in the first five seconds? What, what, what are we looking at there? What's step one? Step one. Well, I'm just going to circle back for a second about something you said about um, it being about me. Mm. And this relates to these three questions. So I actually did an Instagram post the other day, which was really, really popular. And it was, no one gives a fuck about your business. And it's a harsh truth. No one cares about you until they know you care about them. Yeah. And that's the context that we really need to bring to answering these three questions. Mm. So the three questions. The first one sounds so simple when you say it out loud, but you would be shocked and amazed, or maybe you wouldn't because you've got a lot of marketing experience, at how many websites fail to answer this fundamental question straight off the bat. Now, when I'm talking about the first five seconds, I'm talking about the first five seconds someone lands on your website before they scroll, before they decide if this is for them, uh, or they give your website a big yeah, nah. Mm. Right? And so for anyone listening overseas, yeah, nah means no. Uh, yeah, <laughs> That's Australian yeah, yeah. no. Yeah, nah. Um, yeah, nah, right? It's, and, and that happens a lot. That's what we call in the industry a bounce rate. Mm. When someone lands on your page and gives your site a big yeah, nah. Because you haven't been able to answer these questions convincingly to give people a reason to stay. Mm. So the whole point of answering these questions is to give people a reason to stay and take action on your site. Because your website isn't a portfolio. Yeah. Websites are just not a portfolio. And so many people treat them that way. Um, they have to solve a problem. You're totally right about that. They have to have solutions. Yeah. So the yeah. first one, and it's going to seem really obvious when I say it, but when I get um, my students and when we do this in challenges as well, when I get them to review their site and answer this question, they suddenly just go, oh, and it's a real kind of eye-opening moment. So the first question your website has to answer in under five seconds is where am I? Mm. And that sounds crazy, right? Like, where am I? But you would be surprised how many websites don't immediately tell you what it is they do and and, and who they do it for. Mm. So when I'm learning on websites, I often see a beautiful big picture that has no context. The amount of websites I see with a beautiful big picture or even worse, sliders. Don't get me started on them. That's a whole different issue. Yeah. A because that can't answer these three questions. Sliders cannot answer these three questions. So if you have a slider, first of all, get rid of it Yeah. at the top. Anyway, there's this place for it. Where am I? So I often see people that don't even have a clear identity on the business. And that's not the be all and end all because no one, as I said, no one really gives a fuck about your business mm. or they just have a massive thing with their business name and that's it. But it's not explaining what they do. So an example would be landing on a beautician's website. And I'm thinking of a beautician in, in particular who does amazing work. She, she has, you know, and an understanding portfolio, but when you land on her website, there's no information. Mm. And that become, and from a desktop point of view, sometimes you can work it out because you've got a logo and you've got a, a top menu. But quite often and increasingly, we're seeing 60 to 70% of traffic to websites coming from mobile. And all you're getting is a little hamburger menu in the top corner. Very true, yeah. So if you, no one can see your logo because it's like a centimeter across on a mobile device, and if no one can see your headings for your menu items, which are like maybe waxing or, you know, makeup artistry, spray tans, for example, then no one will have an idea of where they've landed. And even if they've come to you from social media, if they've come to you from like a paid ad, for example, you've already put that person on the back foot because they're already unsure. And it's a uh, you know, there's lots and lots of studies that show that the second there is the slightest bit of hesitancy about where someone has landed on a website, the bounce rate increases. Mm. So if you're not quickly identifying 
where someone has landed, even if they've come from social media, even if they've come from Pinterest or Instagram, um, then you're already making someone hesitant mm. about where they are. Yeah. And, any, and every time you increase the doubt, you decrease the conversion. Yeah. So I'm going to say that again. Every time you increase the doubt, you decrease the conversion. That's the thing that you want them to do that makes you money. Because that's what your website's all about. Yeah, because that's it, because you, you've got to look like and be authentic about the fact that you know what their problem is and that you have the solution. Yeah. And, and it, you know, I mean, as you know, if you can show someone their, that you have the solution, even before they know they have that problem, then yes. you're already the authority in that market for them. Absolutely. So it's about hitting you right in that first five seconds. Do you understand them and have you got their back in regards to providing a solution? And if you can do that, then people will take the time to go through the website and Absolutely. really take it in. Otherwise, bounce rate is real. And, and that is, a, is real and it's a killer. Yeah. And you, when you go through stats, I've done that for client websites and you go through and you think, wow, some, some of them used to have bounce rates of 70%. Mm -hmm. Not yeah, uncommon. That is a lot of wasted opportunity. Um, yeah, some of them might yeah. not be your core um, target, but a lot of them will be, and they're just not interested. So that's where these steps, as you say, it's simple, but mm. people aren't doing it. When I go through websites these days, it's how good I am. Um, we do this really well. We do uh, this. And it just cringe, makes cringe. Yeah, exactly. The same word. Because it, it, it I don't care about you. You're so right. I just don't. It's like, how are you going to help me? And are you going to be the person I'm going to feel confident doing that? And that is, is a decision because people make decisions on emotion and they back it up with logic later. Mm -hmm. So people forget that the logic you're talking about in, I do this and I do this and I do that. They don't care. They're, they're no making that first decision on emotion. Mm -hmm. I need help. Can they help me? And if we focus more on them and not on us, um, you're right. The conversions will just skyrocket. Yeah. And it's when you boil down the maths, you, if you are better off converting more of the traffic you're getting than trying to get more traffic. Mm -hmm. You're going to make more money. Now we've talked about it from, this is from a psychology point of view of trust, mm. but Google also uses this as well. So you're above the fold section, it's passing when it's scraped your site and it's having a look at it. If you don't have that information above the fold, Google says, well, that's not a great user experience. Mm. And it, it can very significantly affect your ranking. So we've got this twofold that where design and SEO and sales psychology meet, they do not stand in, uh, exclusively, right? So we've got little Venn diagrams going on here. I'm a maths nerd, by the way. I just like to say, even though I've done sales and marketing and journalism, up until that point, I did maths. And when I was at uni, I did web design as well. Back in the day when HTML was first invented and we'd still use pen and paper. Wow, you would have been one of the first girls in tech. I was in my first year class. There was four of us. Yeah. Uh, in my IT classes, there was four of us. Yeah. I um, in us in so I went to uni. I started uni in nineteen ninety five, and that's when Office ninety five was first released. So before that, we were using Windows. Like yeah. when I was at school, we didn't have email. This is high school. We didn't have emails. Um, and you know, I, I I went to uni and I was doing you know computer and IT subjects and there was four of us four women in our class of about 150 yeah and it was i remember oh that summer like i grew up in geelong but i went to uni in melbourne and that summer it was like 40 degrees when we started and if you've ever been in a room with 150 teenage boys <laughs> you're I, really into it <laughs> i have i have two teenage boys now <laughs> so i can imagine you feel my pain right I think boys now maybe might take a little bit better care of themselves. But it's all about um, the hair. Was, it's all about the hair now. Oh, it's all about the hair. Well, it certainly wasn't then. And those <laughs> boys in particular, it wasn't. And I've been in a class where the lecturer said, once you've had a baby, your brain shrinks. Yeah. And yeah. he actually said that. And there was four of us in the class who were disgusted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Your brain actually grows. And that's that's been proven that your brain actually grows when you have a baby. You can't remember where your keys are, but your brain does actually grow. Yeah, because you're doing 20 things at once. <laughs> yeah, brains can only do so much, right? But that's why they give babies to women, not men. So oh. anyway, I'm, I'm kidding, right? Guys listening, it's okay. 
It's all I right. Mean, it's just jokes. It, it is just jokes. Uh, but, um, yeah, and so I, I have been in those rooms. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm I'm really, because I went to a girls' school and two of the other, uh, of, this, of the four girls that were in that class, three of them had all been to girls' schools. Yeah. Okay. So we had no idea that this was a thing. We just were like, oh, yeah, we, we're like, we like technical things. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it, you know, this is getting off track, but yeah, this is, this is also why I think women don't do this. Yeah. This is why they, they spend so much time on Instagram, which is great. And I spend time on Instagram as well, but I certainly do not put all my eggs in the Instagram basket. And what's worse, if you're putting your eggs in the Instagram basket to get people to your website and then your website sucks some serious ass, yeah. well, then I'm sorry, but you're wasting your time on Instagram. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and when I go back through the stats with my clients from Google Analytics and show them how few people are actually coming to their website from Instagram, and they're like, oh, that's what, you know, I'm really trying to drive traffic to my website through Instagram. You're like, it's not working. Yeah. Um, and then the people that are are clicking off really, really quickly. Yeah. So being able to make sure that you marry in the um, what, what people are seeing on Instagram and then experience as well. And then they're coming from Instagram, they're landing on your website and they've got nothing. Yeah. It is just like, what is this all about? Because Instagram only gives them a hint as to what you're all about. Your website is where you really want to land it. Yeah. So yeah. this above the fold section that I'm talking about, and that's a journalism reference that is used in web design. Um, above the fold, you know, when you fold one of the big papers and you just see the headline, that's above the fold. Yeah. And your website's the same. It's that section when you first land, before you scroll, before you do anything. So if you haven't already told people where they are, A, Google has no idea. Yeah. Right? Okay, you're you're a plumber in Perth, but nothing here is telling me you're a plumber in Perth, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just a geographic thing. So people get confused that this, this part is just about geography. So it's really not. It is about, you're right, if this what's in it for me, mm -hmm. Okay, and that leads us on to the second question yeah. as well. So we've kind of, so the, this petition uh, that I'm talking about originally, yep. about, all she needed to say was, you know, um, you know, beautician services. And that gives her clients and Google something to start with. Yep. And if we're getting really technical, that needs to be in your H1 heading. And this is why people slag Squarespace. And I, I have my own issues with Squarespace, but it's not the actual platform. Yes. It's the way it's designed because you can absolutely 100% rank up a Squarespace site. And I've done it, and I know other people that have done it as well. However, what happens with a lot of Squarespace sites is Again, a graphic designer or a web designer will build the site without any knowledge of what they're doing in terms of SEO. Mm. So your H1 heading or your tag is tells Google that this is the most important thing about this website, about this particular page, because Google ranks a page, not a site. Mm. So being able to tell someone where you are, that's your big, that's your big thing. Like I'm an interior designer in Perth, right? I'm a kitchen or I work with an interior designer recently and we I, I show her website to a lot of people and even though she's an interior designer we focused on the fact that she's a kitchen and bathroom specialist and that's what she does and she makes beautiful kitchen and bathroom designs and we really focused on that um, and then the second thing we did is answering the second question what can I do here so that's the second thing that people have and I'm going to come back to this beautician the reason I went to her website is because I wanted to book in a brow and lash package. Yeah. Right. But it wasn't clearly evident that I could book in a brow and lash package from her whole front page. That's really scary. I had to click into the menu. More steps. You do. People give up. Now I've been to her before, so I was committed. However, if people are not committed, people don't know your brand, they don't know you from Adam, then I'm sorry, but they will go. Yeah, nah, again, and they're out of there. Mm. So at that point, for most people, it makes sense to have a link to either booking an appointment or viewing your uh, viewing your services or your portfolio. Mm. So for some industries, 
it's it's simply book an appointment get it done like let's let's get it on you know what i'm saying mm. um and question three will give a bit more context for it mm. but the second thing is what can i do here okay so you've you've identified that you're a um, a photographer that you are a, a web developer that you you know whatever you are but what can i do here can i buy from you can i listen to podcasts can i use do you have services do you just write books like it sounds really silly when you say it out loud and i appreciate that um but the number of websites that do not identify this is crazy or could do it better you're giving google more context and you're giving more importantly you're giving your clients or potential clients more context about what they can do, how they can work with you. Because let's face it, that's the whole thing. They want to buy that T-shirt. They want to book that appointment. They want to view your services because maybe you do a few things. Mm. Maybe you do logos and branding and web design. And if you're not clearly identifying that straight away, then it becomes really, really hard. And you've got the top menu bar as well, as we talked about. And that's a great SEO signal. Yeah, because um, people, yeah. people forget, don't they, that the um, desktop and the mobile is completely different in the user experience. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I know some of the Squarespace, they do it all for you in regards to making it mobile friendly and navigation, but you're right, in regards to how you interact with those pages, it is yeah. completely different yeah. because you're right, the desktop, you do have those menus you can see easily and people are more likely to do that. Mm -hmm. But the little hamburger one on your mobile is sometimes not as easy. I know on mine, it's not as easy to see mm -hmm. and people can get confused. And I try and make sure that there's a navigation of at the end of each page, yes. there's a way and yeah somewhere for them to go to the next step so mm -hmm. it's a journey and that's easier on the mobile i find you go to the end and there's a next step go to the end and yeah. next step so you're consistently keeping them in the uh, website yeah. and making them you know go on that journey with you to explore more that's what i find has worked for me um yeah. but yeah that's exactly right in making sure people can see what else is in your website what 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 can i do from here your home page we know we're talking about home pages but this these questions are also relevant for your sales pages, your service pages, your category pages, your blog pages. This all, all of these things. A bit like, so we're going to talk about blogs for a second here. So a good blog title draws someone in and makes them want to read. It's not just an SEO function. Yeah. Um, if it's a vague, clever in joke, you've got nothing, right? It doesn't work. And you know people you know it's a it's a cultural thing now to make jokes out of bloggers uh, recipe bloggers who tell their life story i think the, the last joke i heard about it was i'm actually going to confess to a murder in a recipe blog and see if anyone reports me to the police yeah um but that's all seo to be fair um uh, but putting as many keywords in there as possible yeah but um you're taking them on a journey as well so with with this with these uh, questions, so you've got that first one, where am I? What can I do here? You're funneling people through to your objective. Yeah. Now, if you don't have an objective, you can't answer these questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, that's perhaps a, a completely different uh, conversation. But if you, you've got to keep in mind, what is it you want people to do at this stage? Do you want them to visit? A particular a, a service page is it you really want them to view your portfolio now i would say for the majority of people that's not your objective yeah okay do you want them to book an appointment don't give them choice you'll see a lot of uh, websites that have two i've seen three and four button or, or like blurb options on the desktop version yeah uh that works now there are industries where that works really well. Um, so trades industries where you have very functional industries mm. that can work quite well. Again, it's like a menu kind of a structure. Yeah. But you've still got to again think of the mobile experience. There's only so much you can pack in there. Yeah. So you can even have a hyperlink that takes someone to uh, another section. You just concentrate on this first little bit that someone lands on when they first get to your site. So what can I do here? How does that what can I do here line up with your strategic objectives? Mm. 
Is it to book appointments? Is it to book a sales call or a discovery call? Is it to get that email address? You know, what is it? And I think, I want to say it's on Steph Gorton's one, but maybe it's just on one of her landing pages. She's had some, some, some rebounds done. And it's, it's there. As soon as you get there, it's like book a discovery call, or, you know, put some information, get, get in contact. With you. I know you're here because you've seen me on the socials or a friend's referred you. Um, now let's get it on. You know, that's the whole point. It's not, oh, look, here's my testimonials. That's, that's irrelevant, right? You want to give people the option to do the thing. Now, they might not be ready for it, and that's where the rest of the page comes in. Yeah. You want to give people the option to do the thing. So for most people and most um, service-based businesses, it will be view your services. Yeah. Um, or book a discovery call. Yep. Yeah, that's what I that's what I usually find in my website. It's normally services and they go through and then they usually end up with the discovery call because I, I put them through that journey so they can experience and at the end of each page it's another journey pathway and mm-hmm. then it leads them to where I want them to go. Yeah, you and you you've got to think about it. You're leading you're taking someone with you on a journey. You are the guide at this point. You are not the hero of your story. And again, that was another Instagram post I I did recently. You are not the hero of your story. Yeah. We, people don't give a shit. The jobs don't give a toss about you. It's so brutal. I know. And it sounds, it sounds quite harsh, but it is really true. Um, So people want to know what they can do. And that, that makes sense. Why are you wasting their time? People are so goddamn time poor. Don't waste their precious time. Have enough respect for your clients that you're not wasting their time. Have respect for people and their lifestyle. Make it easy for them. The third question ties it all together with a big pretty bow. Yeah. And this is where you get the conversion. So I, uh, I find that most websites will, to a degree, answer questions number one and two. I'm here on an, an interior designs website and I can view the services. Great. Question number three gives them the why, the what's in it for me factor, the WIFM factor. And it's exactly what you've been talking about. Yeah. What's in it for me? That's it. That's the question that everyone has when they're looking at any website. You know, and unless you're looking at your best friend's website, you don't really give a shit. You just don't. Um, you want to know what the value is in it for you. And it's, it is value. Yeah. And this becomes really important if you're selling a high ticket item or uh, you are charging premium prices. Value. What's in it for me? And people will pay so much money for value. But they need to know why. Why should I do the thing that you want me to do? So it's... This is where a really good copywriter is worth their weight in in gold because they will be able to answer that question for you. But before you get to that step, before you look at hiring a copywriter, don't believe for a second you have to because this is something you can do yourself because no one knows what you do. No one understands the value that you can bring like you do. So if you can't identify the value of what you bring, there's two issues going on. You don't have value. That's really harsh, but you don't have value. You've jumped on a bandwagon with a product or sale or a service that you've got no business being in. Mm. And, and, you know, if you can't identify your value, you need to go back quite a few steps and look at your whole entire business. Um, And the second um, is... The biggest issue is if you if you can't communicate that you haven't done the foundational work. So you either don't have value or you haven't done the work yet. So if you can't quickly and clearly identify the value that you're bringing to a customer or a client, you haven't done enough work or you're in the wrong thing and you should get out. Yeah, because they're, um, they're, not, they're not going to, they're just not going to go along with your journey if they can't automatically see mm-hmm. that you can, because people want the results, don't they? They're going to, yeah. they're buying the results that they can see. And if you can yeah. sell to them the fact that you can provide those results in those high ticket items, then people will pay. It's just whatever they will pay in Absolutely. the results they see. And if they don't see it in you, then they won't do it. Yeah. And, and another big one with this why 
can simply be something like book a discovery call in under five minutes. So uh, with an online tax accountant that, that I was working with, you can book all your tax online. That's great. But what's stopping people is they might be like, oh, it's so complicated. So how we changed that was book your tax assessment in under five minutes because the whole process is so quick and simple. Mm. And it's as simple as giving people a, a little bit of context about the next step as well. So that why also includes kind of a bit about the idea of what it's like to work with you. So the interior designer that I worked with recently and we redesigned her site, we talked about the fact that she's with you from the start to the finish of the project. She doesn't just give you some pictures and go cheerio, she's with you the whole way through as a project manager and you know, right down to she'll come and she'll come shopping with you and kick out your cushions. Yeah. You can't put that in a top level, but you can communicate that I'm with you from beginning to end. So you, this is where you have value. So you're not just in, and again, people don't necessarily know perhaps if it's a new industry, they're like, oh, I really need someone to help me with my nutrition, but they're really unsure of the process. This is where you can help people go, oh yeah, this is the nutritionist for me. So maybe you're in a uh, function, so, uh, we did a challenge recently and there was a couple of functional medicine practitioners in there. And most people are like, the what? And that was the response in the group. People were like, well, that's great, but I, you're a functional medicine practitioner. I don't actually know what that is. No, I do know what that is because I've actually been to see one. Yeah. But that was because she was also my naturopath. So I knew what that was. I had a bit of context. But if I had landed on that page, and I had no idea what a functional medical practitioner was or could do for me, the likelihood of me actually doing the thing and booking that call or assessment would be very low. Yeah. So, you know, this is, you know, this is where we have to start talking about the fact that you are, you know, assessing your health with scientific or diagnostic testing. And that becomes totally different to I'm a functional medicine practitioner because no one knows what that is. Yeah. I want to know that you're going to make me feel better by analysing my food. Yeah. That's actually what they do, but <laughs> not, not personally, it goes to a lab, right? You have to actually post it, it's gross, but it works. Anyway, but the, the whole thing is, is that even though you know, this, this person could be the number one expert in their field, you could be the best person in your field and someone who can communicate their value to your clients better than you can will beat you every time. Yep. Yep. Because it's a perceived value, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, um, what you'll find is that again, like I, uh, I keep saying to my clients, you know, saying I offer it cause I work with a lot of tradies, um, offer a, a free quote and I'm the best and quality service. And well, well that's, you know, that's everyone. So the thing I believe now is, you know, name it, give it personality, you know, tell people what you're about, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if it's a, a, you know, a quote, make it a free summer design session, you know, make it what you, so they get a sense of what they're going to get when they're with you. Absolutely. And, you know, and if you're naming packages, like I name my packages based on my target market and sort of what, you know, I give them a personality so people sort of get a sense of what they're going to get with me. Yes, so what I you're think, going to get, that's so important. And quickly, tell them instead quickly. of saying something, yep. something strategy, I say mine are, um, you know, am I doing it right, question mark. That's package number one. You know, fix it for me, package number two. You mm -hmm. know, so, you know, because I'm talking to guys that. that need quick information. So mm -hmm. it's like, and then it's like got leads, now what? So, yes, yeah, you know, now what? Like, I don't know, please help me. He's like, yeah. And then I put memes with them that match what I'm saying so they can see it. It's that thing of really getting in on who you're talking to and what level of time they have. So mm -hmm. my tradies need bloody leads quick and they got no time and they're scrolling on their phone and they yeah. find me go, oh my God, she, she can fix it. Just get yeah. her to fix it. Yeah. You know, and then they can look at the testimonials and they can see me on Instagram and all that sort of stuff. So I've been found online just by people putting in keywords. And I pop up That's and the whole thing. You yes. know, and there I am third on the list and they check me out and they go, oh, she looks like she knows what I, I need. Mm -hmm. And then they book a discovery call. But why do they do that is because when they've they've you know they're probably clicking on two or three different results. Yeah. You're the one that quickly resonates with them because your website has answered those questions. Yep. 
and then it's quick to book a call too. Yes. It's in there on the home page at the end of whatever page it is they're looking at, they click it, they book it, bang. And don't, so don't make me work for it. Don't make no. me think. Don't make me work. That is basically the fundamentals of web design. Don't make me think. Don't make me work. Don't try and be cute. You're not Apple. No. And you don't I, need you're not a nice. whole lot of words either, really. Don't be talking about all oh, how good you are, what we do. Blah, 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 blah. People have given up by the first three sentences. Yeah. I've make it easy to scan. Yeah. And that's, you've got a balance. With SEO, you have a balance yeah. of having enough words that yes. gives you context about what your site does. Yeah. But that's a good, clever thing, especially for blogs. Yeah. Especially for blogs. If you are writing a blog without headings, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. You break it down with headings. You're basically telling people what each chunk of information you're going to answer them. And I, the formula that I, I give to, to a lot of people, I'm going to share that little formula here. Yeah. You break it down into your opening. This is what you, this is what we're going to be talking about, right? So come in, sit down. These are the five things that I'm going to be covering today. Hyperlink to those sections internally. And that, that is a technical strategy and you may need someone to implement that for you or build a template for you. That's fine. I'm not saying everyone can do that off the bat. But we've all seen those blogs and you're, you're talking about something. And it's got maybe five solutions for five top tips, my 10 top tips, my seven, top, yeah. whatever, my three top tips. Link to those sections because your user may only be interested in one of them. Yeah. But they may find so much value they want to know more about you. Yeah. Make it easy. Don't make me work for it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It also makes blog writing much easier. So if you look at a blog, it needs to be about 800 to 1200 words for a good substantial blog that's going to be found, that people are going to share. So they did a lot of research on blogs that get shared and the, 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 the kind of the sweet spot is between 800 and 1200 words, right? You're quickly telling people what the information is, but it makes it easier to, to write. If you find five subheadings, use keywords or related keywords. You're not just using the same keyword all the time. You're using related keywords, yeah. you're popping them in. You've now write, you now write, what, 100, 150 words on each topic, yeah. it's easy to read. If you've got bullet points, even better, um, because people are skimming. Um, how easy is it to then write a thousand words on that? You've got a heading, you write 150 words in your opening paragraphs. Yep. Two paragraphs, right? You write a paragraph on each of your subheadings, maybe two paragraphs. You want to break it up with some bullet points. And then you write a conclusion and a call to action. Mm -hmm. you know, this is the what can I do here? I yep. see so many blogs that don't have anything at the bottom. They don't have a sign up to my mailing list, how to work with me. This is a little bit more bio info. They have nothing at the bottom of it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that, that, that top section there is kind of the same thing. It's like, what can I do here? Why should I, um, what can I do here? Um, how, how can I do it? And, and, and why should I do it? Like, so those, those three factors relate to your blogs as well. And it relates to your service pages. Yeah, and, and, and you're about don't page. forget too that blog posts, if you spend the time writing a good a blog post with all of those elements, mm -hmm. you pinch parts of all of those elements to put on your socials, to put on LinkedIn, to put on. Um, so once you spend the time doing that proper content in those keywords, in those blogs, you can replicate those across all of your social platforms. And that's so time easy. well spent. And people think mm -hmm. I don't have time to do this social media, but really if you spend a good day once a month writing good content you can cut that up and you can have content for that whole month based Absolutely. on different topics if you're writing about three different things in a blog post can't you you can pull different subjects out and easily easily and and in those so subjects, even in so those, yeah even in those you'll have maybe some bullet points each of those three bullet points can be a social media post yeah it can exactly. be a pin on pinterest to get people to your blog post yeah, yeah. You know, you've got lots and lots of different ways because people might, as I, I mentioned, people might only identify with one factor in your in your blog, but that's what they really want to read about. Yeah. So make it easy to get to. Yeah. And that's the whole thing with these questions is make it easy. So make it easy for users. Make it easy for Google. Make it easy for yourself. 
Yeah, and what did I find? The Google Console the other the other day. Search Console, love Google Search Console. Yeah, Google Search Console is a winner. I like that. I went in there the other day, isn't it? and I had a really good play around. And um, you can resubmit pages on your mm-hmm. website um, yes. and make sure that they're you know because I the reason I went in there was my homepage was still showing old information. Mm. I went in there and resubmitted the the new page again and now it's coming up with the new stuff and I can see all my stats. So I found for small business owners, a good start is Google Search Console to to really understand it. What I found really interesting with Google Search Console is when you open, there's a report on your performance. Mm. And what that does is for people who are not familiar with Google Search Console, is it shows you all of the keywords people have typed in that have resulted in either your page showing up in the results, where approximately over the last week, three months, 12 months, your, your that query has led you to show up in the results. And also how many people have clicked on that. Mm. But what I find that interesting is, so the top results you already know. So I'm gonna use a, a wedding photographer uh, that I work with as an example. And we know that she shows up for obviously her brand name, which is good, you know, we've done the bare minimum there. She ranks very highly, she ranks in the top pay, top spot for uh, wedding photography packages. That's another N. Um, because, you know, people, it's, you know, even though she's expensive and she, not expensive because she's fucking amazing, but yeah. even though she's not the cheapest wedding photographer in the world, people don't care because on that page, they, she shows that value. Yeah. yeah. But where it gets really interesting on Google Search Console is, and she writes a lot of blogs about the venues and they show up and she ranks the, the, you know, the top pages for the venues as well. And that's another in because it's straight after you book your venue, you book your photographer. Yeah. So that's, we, we, we're looking at this from a multidimensional point of view. Well, okay. What I found is when we go to the ones that are maybe ranking, so these are all kind of ranking on the first page. Then we look at the results for, for key terms that you're ranking on the second and third pages. They're my quick wins. These are terms that Pete, that you Google is showing you in the search results for. Maybe someone's scrolled through for a couple of pages, or you, you come up somewhere um, in that. You, maybe you, you you've hit the, the top one at one stage, but your average over a certain amount of time is page two or page three. Where where I find is you take those terms and you maximize your content, or you build new content around those terms. Because how you describe things and how your users describe things, when you look at Search Console, it can be completely different. Yeah. And it's eye-opening. Google Search Console, if you don't have it hooked up, hook it up. If you're not sure how to do it, give me a shout out and I'll help you with it and, and go through what you need to do because that information is priceless. Absolutely. But this is market research for free. It literally is, is free, free guidance and free information free that you can market use now, research. You know, my, right now. It, my favorite one on her on hers was I was scrolling through and I was like, in the early days when we we're really trying to get her site ranking, scrolling through and scrolling through, and I I stopped. I I, I killed myself laughing and I had to phone my client and I was like, what the hell? Someone had searched in naughty wedding photographer Perth. <laughs> First of all, this came up in the search results, so I, I don't even want to know. I was like, Simone, you got stuff on your website you're not telling me about. Um, is this is it, you, you're doing some new special offers there, are you? Um, but we, we hope that they actually meant boudoir photographer. Yeah, yeah. So you just don't know the different ways that people are looking for until you can access this information because it, it, yep. it always gives me a chuckle. And again, one of the ones that we, we found after we'd had the site launched for a few months because people were really typing in WA. Yeah. Something that simple. And the search volume was significant enough that we wanted to incorporate that in places in the website yeah. to show to ensure that it was ranking. So if you're not sure what people we, we, we talked about intent, right? If you're in if the search is intent, if your website doesn't say, match the search's intent it's going to fail, especially with this new um, algorithm that's, that's rolling out in, in, in May. It's all about why has this person looked for this query? Why has this, per- what is the problem that this person has that I can solve? So we'll come back to functional me- medical practitioners. They can help you feel better. They can use scientific analysis to help you feel better. 
So I'm re I'm not a big woo person. Like I'm a maths person. I'm a technical person. You're as far from woo as you as can as far from as possible. But I go to a naturopath. Yeah. I go to that naturopath because she is really big on the science yeah. of functional medicine about, you know, uh, really looking at the relationship between different uh, things that are, that are going on. Um, and, you know, she, she, that's the reason that I go to her because I trust her. Um, and, and But I'm not typing in, you know, scientific-based naturopath. I'm typing in, oh, please, God, help, fix my migraines, yeah. right? fix my migraines and you know that that's the intent so if you know that people are migraine sufferers you're creating a page that's you know, basically suffering from migraines I've got a fantastic program to help you make a consultation call now and again that comes down to your customer avatar your target market your business offering the basics of marketing yes. so that you're hitting their pain points and it, yeah. it's it's so simple but it's so overlooked and, and i think so that's powerful yeah that's so powerful people don't um, okay, so i want you to run me through okay so step 1 step 2 step 3 so we're looking at we looked at today the three questions your website has 5 seconds um, to answer yeah so we've gone through step 1 where am i where am i so we're looking at you know what is it i offer where am I? can they find out their what they need to know in 5 seconds mm -hmm. to stop the bounce rate to yes. really really show them if like you were saying with the beautician if they're a beautician yeah. You know what yes. things do they offer can it be easily found are you on the page for what you're looking for yeah am i on a beautician's website am i on a beautician's website are they going to give me what i need am i there um and they will bounce real quick so mm -hmm. that we need to address um and it needs to be above the fold so we were yes. talking about things Absolutely. like that sit straight up so when they see it they get all the information they need not about you mm -hmm. about them and what they're there to look for so yeah. that's what we're looking for for step one. Step two, and these are the questions that um, you need to answer in the, the three. So question one was where am I? Question two or step two, what can I do here? Yes. So they're on your website. What mm -hmm. can I do? Where can I go? What's my navigation path, my journey through yes. this website? Where, where are you leading them? Yeah. You know, where are they going to and what's your ultimate outcome that you want them to achieve you yes. know so yeah. are you leading them to your discovery call are you leading them to download an ebook are you where are you going and yeah. how is your website getting them there yes and then step three why should i do it yeah. so this is you know like you're saying um with naturopaths and things you know you know are you telling them a story in regards to you know why are you giving them the personality you're giving them a reason they should try you instead of joe blogs yes are you really showing them why they should do it? Um, again, talking about them, not you, but telling them how you have the solution for what mm -hmm. it is that their ailments are, i.e. migraines. Yes. Are you, you know, and that's where your blog post comes in, your, your, um, your storytelling, your copywriting, you're making yeah. sure that you're hitting all those keywords. Yeah. So when people are searching, you come up. And when people are on your website, they can easily find that information they're looking for. That Absolutely. sort of why, you know, why should I do it with you? Yeah. Yeah, as What's opposed to the one around the corner who says they're the best as well. Well, I'm not saying I'm the best, but I'm saying I'm the best for you. Yes. That, and that is it. That is it in a nutshell. I, I am the best solution for you. Yes. And that will resonate with your ideal clients. And it will resonate with people who are not your ideal clients. People are worried about, oh, but if I say that, I'll be marginalizing. Stop. Yeah. Stop with that because you've got to think about the 20% of people who make you the 80% of your money. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And that's exactly right. I said that in my um, post the other day. Your revenue, uh, 80, you know, 80% is, is the marketing stuff. You know what I mean? 20% of the time spent gives you 80% of your revenue. So, you know, why are you not investing time in making sure that you're getting this message across to the people and that you're making sure that um, you're giving them the information they need directly? Yeah, it, I mean, people say, well, then I'm not giving information to everyone. But you, your yeah. target market is not everyone. Stop thinking you're missing out. You're yeah, going you're to not forward versions from people who are your target market. And that's ultimately the goal. It's not about being seen by the most people. It's by converting and providing an offer to those people that really want it. 
Um, and people need to get around that. Stop thinking you're missing out and think about the opportunities you can get with good SEO, good content, good copy, all that sort of stuff. This book, uh, if for anyone who hasn't read it, Predictably Irrational, it's fantastic. Ah. But it's, it's amazing. It's life-changing. One of the, the, the things, I read and reread this book, right? One of the things that, that Dan talks about in the book is about opportunity lost because you're holding on to something else, because you're so worried about missing out on something else, you're actually missing out on a better opportunity. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I see websites that their descriptions are too vague, too fluffy, too generic, that no one knows what you're for. Now, yeah, unless you're yeah. funny, that's one of the few examples that I can think of where it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from, you've probably shopped in Bunnings, right? Unless you're Bunnings, you're not for everybody. No. And I had this conversation with a client yesterday. Um, he wanted to do a brand awareness campaign. And I said, you've got a budget of like $400. Brand awareness is not where you're at. No. because brand awareness is going to lose your money. You need direct response marketing. You need to have a solution. You need to have something that provide. you know, you need to hit a pain point, provide a solution, give a call to action. That's the only way you're going to make value out of that money because unless you are Bunnings or Nike or Coke, a brand awareness campaign is too generic. It's too general. Absolutely. It's and, far too general. And unless you've got millions and millions of dollars, um, brand awareness and generic copy is never going to have any impact. So you need to niche down. And um, I can't say that enough when it comes to your website as well. Because since I've done that on mine, it's made an enormous difference many years ago when I realized, um, you know, you just really need to find who who's your tribe, who's your people and talk to that. Talk to them because yeah. they are the people that are going to make you your money. Yeah. Who, you know the people that are walking through your door, that are coming into your clinic, that are buying your T-shirts. You know who those people are. This is what I was talking about. You don't need to hire outside help necessarily yeah. in terms of investigating, knowing who your ideal clients are. No, it's your time. You just need to take the time. <laughs> it does. And, and look, that's, and that's the hardest thing. And that's where, you know, working with a coach, working with a professional is really, really good because you know, you and I, we're the people that tweeze that information out of our clients, right? Yeah, and we, and, you know, and we can see from the outside and yes. we're not so invested in it. Absolutely. Which, lead, which leads me to the question, where can people find more about you? If, okay. if they've got website issues, if they're worried about their SEO, they just want a, someone to give them guidance, mm -hmm. how do they find out more about you and, and where they can get that guidance from? Wait, number one at the moment is Instagram because I am like the mechanic with the dodgy car. I am helping everyone else at the moment that my web page is um, developing. I um, <clears throat> previously have done a lot of to work for other people. So you can find me at lus, l u -S -S dot com dot au, and that's more of my done for you services. But it will give you some information um, about how to get in contact with me. Yep. Otherwise, Get on the socials. Let's connect. Follow me for a little while. Find out a little bit more about me. It's Jilly underscore Corker. That's where you'll find me on uh, Instagram. Yep. And stalk me. Become a Corker stalker. Like find out a little bit about more about me. And yes. you know, and then you'll know if I'm the right person. That's exactly right. And I mean, you're great on the socials and you do reels and you provide um, no bullshit advice and you do Facebook. Um, group as in um Challenge challenges group, yeah. you know getting people to understand it and i think that um a lot of people um know they need to do something but they just don't know who or how or where so i, I think, think it's um, the overwhelming of where do i start yeah, and most and that's people the think that their website is so it's 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 tech it's not for me i don't do tech i do instagram yeah that's not true if you can operate canva yeah i can guarantee you you can build a website yeah, and it's that whole. Fact, my you website know, builder that I use is so easy to use. I get frustrated with Canva. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And and where this, I mean, we do like small websites that are just easy to do. But the people like yourself that do um, can really see the benefits and like of building out a really good website. And I appreciate that so much because I know that the the work that goes in behind the scenes of trying yeah. to do a really good website. So I really appreciate that work too. And I know other people will, but I think they need to understand the SEO and that's where a coach comes in. And I think that um, you're the perfect um, 
person for them to touch base with because you're so passionate about it you understand it you get them as a small business owner yeah. yourself yeah so um i think that's um where they need to check you out on socials with your uh, with, with the website and seo coaching in particular yes and so, i do a 90 minute training session yep. um and you rec we, we do it via zoom we you can record it this is the most important thing you can record it because we do it via zoom and you can refer back to it at any time yeah, that's and a lot that's of my good. clients have been like, that's the best thing because there's so much information. Yeah. I needed it recorded. Yeah. So I can go back. And they don't even have to leave the house. You know, it's not like no, you have to go to a conference. Like you can yeah. wear pants, girls. It's fine. And that's, and that's exactly what people want these days. They want it quick, they want it when they want it, and they want it recorded so they can watch it back. So I think you've got it, and a 90-minute thing is perfect timing. So everyone, if you want to get on top of your SEO, go see please 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 <laughs> go see Jillian and get on top of your SEO because it's important mm -hmm. as a marketing person myself I know how important it is so even I'm not on top of it as I should be so I need to do even more work now that I've discovered Google Search Console <gasps> and also listening to Jilly and on Facebook and, and Instagram and just getting those tips so if you if you're not sure just follow as she said stalker get on top of it and then if you want to take the next step you know where to go I think it's getting those little tips first yeah. and putting your foot in the water um, and then the next thing once you're ready you know where to go and you'll yeah. know as you say you'll know if you're the right fit because you you've you've got that personality out there and people can can see and go oh well that no she gets me you know, yes, and please, no thanks. And I'm not going to be offended by no thanks. I'm no, really and, not. No, because you're not the right fit. And that's exactly like I said on my thing the other day, saying no to a client. If you're not the right fit, you're not the right fit. And people know it. They're not they're not silly. And you know it. You can say no to people that aren't the right fit for you too. Yeah, I've had to say no to people because as I said, I'm transitioning from done for you services yeah. to really coaching and uh, later in the year be doing a, a course as well. Yes. Um that I've had to say no to people coming to me saying, oh, can you fix this on my website? Can you do this? And I'm like, no, actually, I, I can't. Yeah, it's no longer that. aligned. And I'm, I feel exactly the same. And that's what I've started doing as well. Sometimes you just got to do where your business is going. And Absolutely. that's exactly right. Um, well, it's been adorable talking to you. I've loved every minute of it because um, you and I could talk for hours about all of this yeah. because we or live anything. it every day. Um, <laughs> now, we've given everyone where to go. I'll pop up our links um, for these as well and at the end of um, this um, podcast, but check you out online. And then um, maybe if you can pop that book as well um, when you see us in the socials when this goes up. Yep. Predictably Irrational. It's, yeah, it's, it's actually on my Instagram as one of my top three business books that I Thank recommend. You. I haven't read that one, so that's going on my list because you yeah, know me. I love go my... on to Amazon or whomever you, you get your books for, yep. from. Yeah. Predictably Honestly, Irrational. by Dan uh, Early. He's a professor of communications and economics. In, I think it's Stanford, possibly. Oh, I love a good book, so I always love adding to my list. So that'll um, be another one. They, it's mind-blowing mind blowing oh, well, I how many dumb blowing. things that we do every yeah. day yeah that are exactly you, you mentioned it before that kind of aren't logical they're emotional and then we try to justify it with logic yeah and that's I'm that's sure that, that is actually a sentence in this book yeah, because that's what it's all about. It's talking to the emotional side of the brain because we all want to buy something. Say you want to buy like a deck or build a deck. It's not because you want a deck. It's because what a deck will give you, the feeling it will the give lifestyle. you. So remember to do your copy and everything you do towards that feeling, not towards the actual objects because people yeah. don't buy the object. They buy the feeling that it gives them. Yeah. We so all that's like a nice big deck. Let's not lie here. Oh, mate, I'd love a big deck. We're getting there. We're getting there in our backyard. Um, okay. It's been um, lovely talking to you and um, thank you so much. And um, everyone hit up Julie on the socials and thank you so much. See ya. Bye.